Hello everyone. Welcome to TCOM 101, Dr. Mike Gerhard. In this video, I want to continue to talk about some of the unintended consequences of the TCOM technology megatrends. You know, very often technology bites back in negative ways. So we want to continue our critical thinking about the TCOM technology trends that we see around us every single day. So let's talk a little bit about the consequences of compression. And again, I'm just mentioning a few examples of some of the unintended consequences. There are many, many more. But think about um, compression. When we can have MPEG-3, for example, in highly compressed files, whether they're movies, video games, or music, we can share those very easily and appropriate them, steal them, violate intellectual property rights because we have this amazing connectivity and compression in digital technology. So theft of intellectual property on the internet has become a major problem, whether it's signal theft or, you know, illegally sharing your Netflix password or actually downloading or breaking into a stream that you're supposed to be paying for. Okay, there's many ways that you can steal intellectual property. What is intellectual property? Well, that's the rights that you're given immediately once you create something, once you write something, create a film, a video game, music, you have rights, okay? And you can apply for a copyright and that gives you many rights, the right to make copies, the right to perform, okay, and a whole host of others. Publishing rights, for example. So, intellectual property, okay, and it should be protected. Otherwise, what's the incentive to create, okay, if you can't ultimately benefit financially from your work? Now, a big problem is online piracy, okay, the theft of intellectual property, whether it's music or video games or whatever the content, film, online piracy is the unauthorized duplicating of copyrighted material, a major problem on the internet. Now, the rise of streaming has led to a decrease, really, in piracy and the theft of intellectual property, but it's still a major problem and it costs the industry billions of dollars of revenue each year. All right, what about the rise of interactivity, these engaging and immersive kinds of media experiences like video gaming? Well, that's wonderful and enriching, but some people fear that for some people it will lead to computer addiction. Okay, now this is a very controversial uh, issue, computer, computer addiction. Some people take it seriously, others scoff at the idea. Okay, but I feel it's a significant problem. There are a lot of therapists now who will treat internet and video game addiction, and in fact, there are inpatient treatment centers where you can send your kids to, to detox them and to get them to unplug and to work and face their addictions. Okay, now computer addiction is just the overuse, the compulsive, excessive use of computers or video games that starts to interfere with your daily life. You don't take care of your hygiene and your schoolwork and your other obligations because you can't pull yourself away from the computer experience. Now, this is a big problem in our society. We have these tools we have to use, but it's very easy to become kind of addicted to them. Now, there's a great debate in this country about whether a computer and video game and internet addiction is a real serious uh, pathology, a real psychological disorder, okay? The um, kind of the handbook for psychology in the United States is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. This is the, the book that the mental health professionals use to diagnose different mental disorders. Right now, there's a huge debate whether the newest editions of this manual should designate internet addiction as a mental disorder. 
They haven't embraced the concept fully, but it looks like this group of professionals is moving toward it. And once it's put in this particular manual, then insurance companies recognize it as a legitimate a malady and that they're willing to help pay for treatment. Now, video gaming, a lot of people think that there's an actual mental health problem called gaming disorder. And in fact, the World Health Organization a couple of years ago began to take this seriously and classified gaming disorder as a diagnosable and treatable condition. So the mental health community is kind of split on this, but some of the experts recognize this problem of gaming disorder and gaming addiction. All right, the rise of personalization. Boy, this is great, but it also has significant consequences, mostly because it narrows Okay, our world view, we only look at the stuff that we're comfortable with, that gratifies us personally. So I think if we're too much into the personalized media world through streaming and um, different websites and apps, we really run the risk of getting tunnel vision. It's like wearing horse blinders. We're focusing on the stuff we enjoy, but we're missing a lot of important information that's outside of our immediate vision. Okay, so tunnel vision is a, to focus on a limited, it's a myopic, it's a limited point of view. Now, these are all related concepts. Another idea is the notion of the filter bubble. We started to learn about this back in 2011, and this is how personalized websites change how what we read and how we think what's a bubble that's the intellectual isolation that occurs because websites use algorithms that make assumptions about us and the information we want and then push information towards each one of us according to a whole set of assumptions now if we all do the same google search we'll get different results based on everything google knows about our search history our preferences and our predispositions. Now, the websites make these assumptions about us and our interests based on all the information they gathered about us, our click behavior, our browsing history, our search history, our location. All of this data enables the websites to customize or to tailor the information. Well, what's the problem with this? It's not so much what we're getting, it's what we're not getting what's outside of the bubble. You know, here's a quote by the guy who wrote the book, The Filter Bubble, Ellie Pariser. But he said, democracy requires citizens to see things from one another's point of view. But instead, we're more and more enclosed in our own bubbles. Democracy requires a reliance on shared facts. Instead, we're being offered parallel but separate universes. And I think it's so true. Some of this leads to a phenomenon called cultural fragmentation. We're only interested in our own um, cultural interest or group, and so we sort of miss the big picture sometimes. Okay? Cultural fragmentation happens when different groups that individualize, customize all their info and cultural experiences, and, and that's great. Follow your own heritage and culture, but don't forget, here in America, we share a common culture. We are Americans and human beings. Okay. So that personalization, I think, has um, fed into this current political climate that's really highly polarized. We really have almost an us versus them kind of political climate in America, very divisive. And personalization, I think, reinforces some of this horrible divisiveness that we have right now in the divided states of America. Okay, it's hard to find empathy and understanding for others when you're only considering your own perspective. All right, let's talk about advances in miniaturization. We love all the convenience to have these small scale phones and other devices. It's wonderful, but there's a downside to this miniaturization as well. Think about covert surveillance, spying on people with tiny cameras and hidden microphones. It's so easy today to spy on people without their knowledge. That's covert surveillance. 
Anytime you're out in public today, maybe you should assume that you're under surveillance from some camera somewhere, right? Covert sur surveillance is the monitoring of people in a surreptitious manner where they really aren't aware that they're being observed. This happens a lot, in, especially globally in the authoritarian countries. But it still happens um, in our country as well. Um, think about miniaturized spy craft, little surveillance drones, for example, that look like birds or insects. And that kind of miniaturization can pose a threat to our personal privacy. Hey, think about something like webcam hacking or other forms of hacking where we can hack into somebody's webcam and then watch what they're doing without our knowledge, another form of covert surveillance. When we have these miniaturized items, it leads to more loss and theft. Have you dropped your device in the toilet? Have you ever left it anywhere in a taxi cab or on a bus? And that is a very, very distressing ordeal to lose your device. The rise of portability. It's great to be able to carry our devices around, but this causes uh, some big unintended consequences. For example, there's something called iPod or iPhone oblivion. That means we're so wrapped up in our phone or our device, we're oblivious to the world around us. Okay? This is being oblivious to our surroundings because we're focused in on devices. We're not aware of our surroundings. And this can be very dangerous. Okay, we need to pay attention sometimes, okay, to what's going on in our surroundings and actually interact with people, okay? Pick our heads up once in a while and say hello to somebody walking by instead of, you know, snubbing them because we're staring on our cell phone all the time. So we need to pay attention when using these devices. It can be dangerous okay, and rude. And today we have to really watch out for our kids more than ever because they're certainly not watching for us. Okay. What about the growth of wireless mobile communication? This is wonderful to have these mobile devices that keep us connected all the time. But again, everything has a dark side. Everything is complex and contradictory. Now, here's one big problem with the cell phones, distracted driving. It takes a toll each year. What a great topic for a controversial issue presentation. You know, thousands of people get killed every year because of distracted driving crashes. Now, we do have technology that helps us have Bluetooth technology we can use to have hands-free driving if our phone is equipped with this technology, but even that poses some level of distraction. And by the way, Indiana just in the last year passed new laws to restrict dis, uh, cell phone use in cars and to uh, combat this problem of distracted driving. Now in Indiana, you are not allowed to hold a cell phone in your hands while you are operating a motor vehicle, although you'll see this violated every day. Okay, another downside to mobility is that people can use their phones and their uh, apps and their connectivity to get together for violent and criminal purposes, you know, like a riot or looting or arson, okay? There's nothing wrong with using the, the social media to organize for a peaceful protest. The problem is when it's used to organize a violent protest or um, any kind of criminal activity. You know, a flash mob is fine. You probably participated in that. You get together, do some dumb act for a, a little time, a cute act, and then you split, okay? And all of these are organized using phones, instant messaging, social media, etc. But it gets bad when the flash mobs turn criminal and violent. Okay, this happens. Teenagers will mob stores in a looting spree. And this has happened even here in Muncie. But criminal flash mobs are a downside, of course, of mobile communication. 
All right, I put out a lot of critical ideas. The idea here is to get you thinking critically about some of these trends and issues in the field of tea. I've identified a lot of possible topics for you in the last couple of videos for your controversial issue presentations. Okay, a lot of times I've talked about online piracy, video game addiction, filter bubbles, hacking, iPhone oblivion, distracted driving, criminal flash mobs, e-waste, the digital divide, concentration of media and tech ownership, internet privacy concerns, mass surveillance. Cyberbullying, ransomware, porn, gambling, cyber warfare, and the spectrum crunch. These are just a few of the thousands of different issues that we can talk about that affect society and the world of telecommunications. So, anyway, that's all I've got for this little video. I hope you got some ideas for your classroom presentations. Please take care of yourself, take care of each other, and be a good, responsible citizen in the community. And I'll see you again soon. So long, everyone.